Oh, hello, hello. Welcome to our last tier one Shatterline weapon guide, where today we will be going over the Impala Sniper, which may be very well the best PvE sniper, yet the worst PvP sniper. But more on that later on in this video. As always, we'll be looking at its most in-depth details as well as some of the most notable attachments. And also we will talk about my personal best builds for both PvP and PvE. So without any further ado, let's get into it. Starting off with the Impala's rate of fire, we have gotten 145 rounds per minute, which is the third highest in the sniper rifle category, but ranking last out of the three semi-automatic snipers. Then we've got damage. For the sniper rifles, most of them are separated by two different damage profiles, closer range and longer ranges. We'll talk about exactly what those ranges are for each one of them. So let's go ahead and start off with the closer range for the Impala. For the Impala, the first damage range goes from 0 to 40 meters for body shots, requiring only two shots to the body, limbs included at this range, meaning this gives us a TTK of 414 milliseconds for body shots at closer ranges. However, for headshotting at this range, we only need one shot to the head to kill, so if you've got a player up in your face when you've got the Impala, your best shot would be to try to headshot him before he guns you down. And of course, for the headshot TTK, that means we've got a 0 millisecond TTK. And then we've got the second damage range for the Impala, which is from 41 meters and above, requiring only one extra shot to kill to the body, meaning we are now up to three shots to the body or limbs to kill at long ranges giving us a TTK of 828 milliseconds. Which, spoiler alert, for body shots, this is the worst performing sniper rifle in terms of damage. And as for headshots, we're also up one shot, requiring now two shots to the head to kill. A shot to the body and one to the head will also do. And that headshot TTK would be of 414 milliseconds. Up next, usually we have a hipfire spread comparison, but for sniper rifles, we will not be having those as those are not exactly available to us for the snipers. However, let's go ahead and look at the recoil, which for the tier one sniper rifle, when you shoot at its fastest rate, the bullet just jumps up a little bit and sits there. So you could argue that recoil is almost inexistent for this weapon, making, in my opinion, any attachments that improve stability or accuracy utter useless, but more on that later on in this video. Now for handling of this weapon, starting off with the aim down sight time, we're looking at 213 milliseconds for the Impala, which is slower than most guns I've tested, but only by a few dozen milliseconds, which isn't much in the grand scheme of things. For reload time, we've got a reload time of 2.5 seconds, which is a whole half a second faster than most other sniper rifles in this category. And lastly for handling, we've got sprint to fire time, which for the sniper rifles, we've got 200 milliseconds across the board. And as always, with our base move speed of 6.6 .6 meters per second, with this sniper, we've got an ADS move speed of 2.4 meters per second, which is fairly slow compared to some of the other weapon categories in Shatterline. However, some other snipers on this list is even slower than this, but more on that in the future. And to close off base stats, we've got magazine capacity, which for the tier 1 sniper that is of 10 shots, which is the third highest out of all the snipers, yet once again being the worst performer out of the semi-automatic snipers. And now let's get down to attachments and mods, and as always, starting off with the mods. For the Impala, in Season 1 we've only gotten one modification, however in Season 2 we are getting a new mod called the Impala Starfall which increases effective range by 12%, essentially increasing the closer damage ranges we went over earlier from 40 meters to roughly 45 meters, which doesn't sound too bad. However, onto the one mod we do have in this season one, we've got the Sea Beast, which after scoring a precision kill, enemies are highlighted for a short duration. Now, essentially what this means is, in other words, when you headshot, or well, when you get a precision kill, enemies in a small radius of about 5 meters or so around the target you've killed become highlighted, the same way an orbit drone would highlight them, allowing you to see them through the wall, and this lasts for exactly 3 seconds before it goes away. And now onto attachments. Now this is where I think this weapon thrives in PvE, but it does not perform well in PvP. 
The attachments seem to be designed with PvE in mind, more so than a PvP mindset behind the creation of these mods. But let's talk about some of the more notable ones. Starting off, we've got the Stimulant Injector. Now, the Stimulant Injector reads, while at full health, every kill increases speed in ADS and aiming speed by 25%, which is decent in its own. I find it especially good in PvE to be in the back of the pack just popping glass heads and keeping those buffs alive. Oh, and by the way, I went ahead and tested. This description leads you to believe that this might stack since it says every kill increases speed in ADS, but it actually does not stack. Next up, we've got bullets with names, which once again is fantastic for PvE, as you'll be killing enemies right and left and be stacking up all these buffs from all these different attachments. Bullets with names brings your reload time down from 2.5 seconds to 1.8 seconds, which really speeds you up in co-op mode. Now let's talk about the firm GN. What I do want to mention is that stabilization limit is pretty much the same as stability. And as we saw earlier how the recoil works with this weapon, stability is completely unnecessary, seeing as the recoil is dead on. And I saw zero change to the recoil testing it out with this attachment, so if I were you, I would just go ahead and skip this one. Up next we've got the combined receiver, which I just want to mention. Not only is this crap because you have to kill someone first before it's active for a few seconds, but the footstep sound volume does not take away from the fact that you will still glow red in your enemy's minimap and it will not help you at all. And there's the Rainbow G. Once again, stability is crap for this weapon, so avoid this. And then there's this beauty, the Zangle I-36. This is one of the strongest PvE attachments I've reviewed so far. To easily abuse this, all you have to do is headshot a glass head and you've got a whole 50% damage increase. I find this to be amazing for destroying elite monsters right after shooting a glass head and it's glass head. But anyways, let's go ahead and see what we've got for our best PvE and PvP build. Starting off with my PvE build, I use the Sea Beast with the obvious choice of the Zango I-36, which in my opinion is a rank S attachment for PvE. It is an insane damage boost that can be abused in many ways. Then I've got the Bullets with Names, which once again stacks really well with the Zango. And as I'm going on about killing, I've now got a boost to reload speed as well as 50% weapon damage boost, which in my opinion is as great as it sounds. And lastly, I use the Gunstream Z54 sight, which I prefer it over the default sight, and I also appreciate the increase in effective range and its faster ADS time to keep me going. Also, I don't find there is any better alternative for the sight. Then next up, we've got my PvP build. And for the first time in my weapon guides, I've got the same exact build as my PvE build. I'd only change the sight accordingly with the map and game mode you're playing. For example, in certain instances, you might want to get a longer range sight when playing Escort, but when playing a close quarters TDM map like the Terminal, you might want something closer range to help you deal with those closer ranges. However, I must admit, I find this weapon to be terrible for PvP. I think it is the absolute worst PvP sniper rifle out of all the other options. Yet, like I said twice already, I find it to be the best PvE sniper due to how many buffs you can keep recycling as you go on around your episodes or expedition mode. Up next, we've got the tier 2 weapons, starting off with the Zenith. So remember to subscribe if you haven't yet, and also expect some season 2 content coming out as soon as season 2 comes out. That's it, peace out and much love guys.